it's always fabulous. I've wanted to be on a stage with Seth Godin. Didn't quite work out it was going to be today. So it's fabulous. And he is so generous in what he gives us and um, the ideas that we have that we can take with us. But generosity is an interesting thing. I, I believe we all have a gene inside us. But some days, some days we feel like we're Mother Teresa and, you know, changing the world and unbelievably generous to everybody around us. And other days we really are Mr Scrooge, you know, just hiding everything, not wanting to be with people. So where does this come from and why? Why is generosity so important in how we are with others? I'm going to need a clicker, otherwise I'm going nowhere. But generosity is addictive and it's also very sticky. As a 16-year-old girl, I went to a girls' school and I had a boyfriend, which was kind of unusual, you know, lots of the girls didn't have boyfriends. And it was coming to Christmas and I was really excited because I was thinking, I wonder what this boyfriend of mine is going to give me as a gift for Christmas, you know. And we'd discuss it with the girls, you all you women know what it's exactly like. Oh, I wonder if he'll give me earrings or a little pendant or something. You know, some trinket it was definitely going to be some trinket. So Christmas Eve arrives and he passes over a plastic bag and inside the plastic bag was a candle-making kit from the reject shop. <laughs> it's like, I wonder, how could he not have known that a girl needs a trinket? And I, you know, clearly the relationship didn't last. You know, what was I going to tell the girlfriends when I went to school? But I was kind of feeling a little bit, you know, I wonder if um, I'm feeling stingy. And my mother had brought me up well and said, you know, darling, be gorgeous. And it doesn't matter what they give, you know, always thank them. And fabulous. oh, thank you very much for the gorgeous candle-making kit. I'm really looking forward to getting those candles made. You know, but my mother-in-law, I've been married for 18 years. Actually, I've known my mother-in-law for 19 years. And every year for Christmas, she gives me a hanky. Now, I'm not quite sure what my mother-in-law is trying to say to me about our relationship. But, you know, I, I was thinking, look, this whole thing, and I feel really stingy when they give me a gift and I'm not truly, you know, thankful and gorgeous. But how is it that these people who I love don't know me? Like, they don't get me. And it kind of leaves me, you know, disappointed and upset. But if I think about the relationship, you see, a gift enhances our relationship. But gift giving as humans goes back to the beginning of time. Was it Adam or was it Eve gave the apple? I'm never quite sure. I think we could just make up the story anyway. You know, we could change the rules if we like. But, you know, somebody gave somebody a gift. In fact, they say that in historical times, gift-giving actually started barter, and then barter became currency. But, it, you know, throughout religious history, there's been gift-givers and, you know, giving for, uh, for acknowledging and then giving gifts for dignitaries, you know, to build relationships, enhance relationships, to thank, you know, bartering and... Uh, and looking for favour. But we've always been in a history. It's part of our humanness to give gifts. Isn't it? It's also one of the languages of love. Now, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we all know that one, the, the triangle, and that very much a part of that is about love and self-esteem. And giving gifts is part of that. But if we think that a gift represents our relationship. Now, the um, funny thing is that with... Um, there's all sorts of reasons we give gifts, like there's traditional reasons. It's Christmas, we're going to give gifts. Or um, we give gifts of acknowledgement for a certain occasion, like um, a wedding, a, uh, a uh, graduation, and we'll give gifts. But we also give gifts because we want to give the other joy. We want to give pleasure. So I think my husband, you know, when we were first dating, he used to buy me all these little gifts along the way, just to show that he was thinking of me. But we also give gifts because... We feel great. That's not always just to say sorry, but we give a gift because we feel fabulous. But, you know, in this room right now, 50% of you will have received a gift last year that you didn't want or wasn't useful. And 50% of you also gave a gift that wasn't useful. So who here thinks of themselves as a great gift giver, by the way? Yeah. Who here would be a fabulous gift giver if you just had a little more time? Yes, I think we'd all be great gift givers if we just had a little more time. But, you know, eBay told us that in December 2009, eBay told us that $1 billion 
was going to be sold online of unwanted gifts. In Australia alone, just in Australia, a billion dollars, that's a lot of money, isn't it? I mean, that's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff that we're giving that people don't really want. And, you know, if we think about it, the, um, the, uh, I got a bit distracted then because I'm thinking, often people say to me, well, then why don't we just give them cash? Cash is a good idea. Because, you know, if you give somebody cash, they're going to buy what they want. Stop all this wastage. That'll be great. But, you know, cash is never a gift. Cash isn't a gift because there's no love that can be attached to it. There's no I know who you are that gets attached to it. There's no excitement or, yeah, love, I think our relationship's worth 150 bucks this year. <laughs> Go out and spend that. <laughs> so, you know, cash is never a gift. But it, it, gifting is about empathy. It's about relationship. It's about understanding who that person is. You know, um, Marissa Keegan, she tells us of her brother. Her brother worked inside an organisation that, and they worked on this big project for a long time. And they worked and worked very, very hard. And the boss was so happy when they finished this task that he decided to get a gift for all the people that had worked on this project. So he handed out an iPod to each of them. The very next day, her brother started looking for another job. The intention of the gift was to honour them and thank them. Her brother is deaf. An iPod is useless. So the intention of the gift was to build the relationship. But without knowing who it was for and what it was for, there was something kind of missing. I want to read to you a comment, actually, that was on my blog. Because this really was going... I just want to tell you about a Christmas gift I got, this woman writes. The Christmas gift my husband received was Halloween items that had been thrown in a clearance bin after Halloween and marked down by 90%. Items included a razor shaped as a bat, a drinking straw with a plastic ghost, edible creepy teeth, and also Halloween marshmallow co cookies that had expired. One's clearly got to say the only intention of that gift was to clear the warehouse. It had no in idea of creating a relationship or making those people gorgeous or special or thank you so much for what was a fabulously hard year, but we got through it together. You know, the one-size-fits-all approach for gifts, I feel actually many a support person, you know, CEO comes out of office and says, righto, it's Christmas, you've got to find something for our clients and our people that's going to make them feel fabulous. Off you go. And, you know, they're left with a poison chalice of what am I going to get for people? And you know what? They never understand the damage that they do to the relationship. My, Marie Keegan's brother didn't go back and say, I'm leaving because you don't understand me. He just left. You know, the boyfriend never realised why we split up either, by the way. <laughs> you know, he thought we just were, you know, destined to end. The how we present the gift is unbelievably important. You know, if you, if a new mother receives a gift wrapped in a finger painting from her three-year-old, it'll bring tears to her eyes. A gift that you get to unwrap with anticipation and delight and you open up carefully and you wonder what it's like. It fills the essence, it frames the work of art, what you've so carefully put together. It builds anticipation, it shows love, it shows intention. It is about knowing people, knowing who they are, knowing what they contribute to them and understanding and taking the time to do so. My son... One day will be a famous musician. He's the young Angus Young. His favourite band is ACDC. He was actually really devastated when he found out that, you know, TNT, Highway to Hell, was released when I was younger than him. He was like, Mum, how can that be? But Black Ice Tour was coming to Australia, so excited, completely sold out. Every day, every day, so there's plenty of hints going around, for three months, Mum... Surely you know somebody who could get us tickets to ACDC. Surely, Mum. On Christmas morning, a big red box with a big blue ribbon. And he unwraps it carefully. 
and he looks inside, having no idea what it could be. And he sees an ACDC logo, and he looks at me quizzically, and he looks again, and he sees the 18th of February, and his mouth drops open. It goes from not understanding, to bewilderment, to excitement, to awe. Oh my goodness, I'm going to ACDC. He couldn't believe it. It didn't matter where he was going to sit in the stadium. I mean, you know, there's like 100,000 people out there. He had the best seats in the house as far as he was concerned. Straight onto Facebook to tell all this. I'm going to ACDC. And how do I feel as his mother? Knowing that I've given unbelievable joy. The experience of anticipation, of counting down the days, of looking forward to something. Like it was the only thing ever, ever in the history of the planet. To love somebody is to make a moment. <laughs> now, the New Economic Forum tells us that there is five ways for us to increase our well-being. And it's not hard. It's really not hard if we think about our well-being as a community. If we think that, well, we just want to be a bit more connected with people. This is what this is all about, is connecting with people, with ideas. To be active, you know, with other people, be busy. Take notice of others to be truly present and listening. To keep learning and installing, but giving. To feel our own well-being is to give. It might be giving our time by volunteering, giving our listening by honouring someone else, giving our thanks by literally just saying thank you to someone. But it's not hard to improve our own well-being by giving a gift. I found myself sitting in an aircraft after being on four weeks holiday having a fabulous time. I was on the flight from Hong Kong to Sydney and I was past a dossier. And in that dossier was a document that I was to read. It was 25 citations from customers of Qantas. I began to read. I laughed. I smiled. I cried. I held my husband's hand. It was the most unbelieving experience to read other people's stories about what they experienced. I'd been invited to be a judge of their People's Choice Awards and as I stood before them on Monday night, asked to speak on behalf of the customers to the employees, I stood before them and I said, of the 75,000 customers that you helped travel today to get to the places they needed to go to do business, you got them there safely and on time. To those people who needed to be reunited with their family, on behalf of the four and a half thousand people who put pen to paper, to thank you, on behalf of your frequent flyers, the People's Choice Panel, I thank you for what you do for Australia. There was not one person in that audience who didn't get that they'd been heard and the contribution they made to our community. To authentically thank someone. To authentically thank somebody doesn't take but a moment. I often speak on customer service, on unbelievable customer service. And I, I talked all the time and will give you my email address and you're most welcome to contact me. This man contacted me, said, I've never heard of you. I've never heard of your company. In fact, I had no idea what you were talking about. But I'm an engineer and I found myself on an aircraft and a flight attendant came up to me and said, the seat 1A has told me their light bulb's out. He goes, oh, I've got time, I'll go and change it. So he did. And he said the customer reached over and held him by the wrist and said, do you know you're the first person who has ever done something for me before the flight? You've made such a difference. I can now read my documentation and get on with the business I needed to do. Thank you. He said, I felt like I was walking in heaven. He said, not just for that shift. I went home, I kissed my wife. I felt fabulous for a whole week. He said, I finally understood it, how easy it is to make a difference to somebody else. You see, the giving of a gift, the giving the gift of thanks, doesn't take but a moment. One of the most precious gifts I was ever given, in fact, I had it as the most precious gift I was ever given, was this. It's, um, it's my daughter's feet when she was only six weeks old. And it says, here are my feet so very small for you to put up on the wall so you can see as time goes by how we've grown, my feet and I. 
And you know when they say, if the house was burning down, what's the one thing you'd take? Why do I still carry it in my handbag with me, just in case I don't get back? But this is my daughter, my 14-year-old girl. She's a teenager, and she's at boarding school. The only way I have to communicate with her is by writing. So we write. There's no email, there's no Facebook, there's no texting, there's no electronic communication. She's on the most unbelievable journey. And she writes to me, Dear Mum, Dad, I love you so much. I cannot thank you enough for sending me here on a journey through these next few months of amazing opportunities and amazing outcomes. I realise how hard you work to send me here. And I want you to know I appreciate every single thing you do. Getting letters and packages from you makes my day, even if they take eight days to get here. I am so coming to realise how amazing you are as parents. Many of the girls here did not have the upbringing I did, and I cannot even start to thank you enough for teaching me one thing, respect. I suddenly realise so much. Thank you for just being cool parents. And although I know you miss me, I know why you sent me. You sent me because you want me to take the lessons you've taught me and use them in my own world. The gift of thanks took but a little biro on a pen. For me, it's my most precious gift of all to hear from, I get to see my girls tomorrow night and I haven't seen her for a very long time. But the gift of thanks doesn't take much effort. Do you know all of us, all of us, I have interactions every day. You know, it's the barista who makes us the perfect cup of coffee, the dry cleaner who gets a stain out of our suit. You know, I absolutely knock the socks off our bus driver, and he's getting used to me. And when I say, thank you for getting me here safely and on time, <laughs> he's just like, oh, my God. <laughs> but, you know, each of us, each of us have more than 10 transactions a day. Now, what if we authentically and truly noticed the person who gave us that, who gave us the gift of contributing to our life, and we noticed them and we thank them? So if each of you were to take on just noticing three people a day, and we did it for 21 days, we could start a movement, as Seth Godin said. We could start something of just making people feel amazing because we said thank you. So I challenge you to exercise your generosity gene, to generously share generosity. Thank you for your listening.